Welcome to another episode of Alpine Garage. This is the 73 Bronco that we are restoring. The engine that's in it is from a 1997 Ford Explorer and we have stroked it to a 347 cubic inch engine. And we wanna keep the factory fuel injection. So in order to do that and have it breathe better since this is the mouth of the engine right here, we wanted to port the intake and port the head so that it drew more air in for that 347 or increased cubic inches. The results are, for me, I'm totally happy with this build. I think that so far, this intake is probably my proudest moment on this engine. Can't wait to show you. Let's get into the video. All right, so fast forward a little bit. I actually did four of the ports. I wanted to try my hand at it before I actually showed you on a video kind of how I did it. This side of the intake, the upper, not the upper part, but the upper part of the lower intake was actually fairly easy. All I did was round this out a little bit. I didn't actually enlarge it too much because the gasket fits pretty well around here and I don't really want to cut the gasket. So I focused on the bend and on the head side, which there was a lot of material that came out of here. I bet you I have a probably two or three cups of just small styrofoam cups full of aluminum shavings from just one side. That's how much extra volume you can get out of these. So as you can see, all of these have been done and they are basically gasket matched. They are just a, a tiny bit smaller than the gasket just to make sure that the gasket doesn't overlap, but significantly bigger. And then I didn't polish them all the way, but I did sand them down to where they're really smooth. So we got that done. Now, one of the things I noticed is that the first intake, so intake runners one and five have the dog legs in them. So these have the most restricted flow, just a stock. They have the most restricted flow of all of them. So they need the most porting. They also took me the longest. Number one took me about three or four hours to completely get done. And part of that was it was the first one I did. So it just took me a little longer. But I did go out and I first purchased a set of kind of extended rasps. And these are made for steel, uh, as you can see, they're cross cut. So spray them down with some WD-40 to keep the aluminum from sticking to it and they work really well. But it does take more time doing this. So I went out to Harbor Freight and I got a $7 set of kind of just uh, the dimple rasps is what I call them because when you use them it actually puts dimples in the aluminum kind of like a golf ball. These $7.99 rasps took about an hour and a half out of each runner. It, literally they're amazing and they're cheap. I just keep spraying them down with WD-40 and they don't get dull. So I'm gonna say first get those in order to shape things then go back through with your cross cuts if that's what you have and smooth it out, smooth out the edges and then go in with your sandpaper roll, like that guy right there. I do all the detail work to get it nice and smooth. You do that, and I got it down to where the last runner that I did took me a little over an hour. So I went from four hours down to one hour, and I pretty much cut time off of each one. And I don't think I cut corners. I think, you know, there was less porting than needed to be done on these because there's not as much of a dog leg here. And they were also easier to get to, so it made it easier to get them ported. So, we are good there. Now, we are gonna to go to the other side and I'm gonna show you the entire process that I do. So, if you wanted to stick around and see what this looks like, let's do it. So when you look at your gasket, your gasket is actually going to say head side on it. So you see that head side right there. So you're going to put that head side with your tabs facing up, just like that. And then what I was doing is I was somewhat matching. I didn't clean off the old gasket material so I could use it as a guide because if I can get that centered where all the holes are, just like that, and then move it to the edge, just like that, the gasket actually matches almost exactly to the old gasket. So then I took a Sharpie and just to make a reference mark on there so I know exactly where I'm cutting. As long as I cut all the black off, I know I'll be pretty close to where I need to be. And I'm going to do that on all four of these before I start cutting. Okay, so now we have that marked. Drop that over to the side. 
And then I'm going to start with the number five runner because it is the hardest runner. This one and number one, that little dog leg right there, compared to the fairly straight of those. This one is a lot harder to do and it takes a lot longer. So I'm going to start here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try not to... My first instinct was to go ahead and cut around here and get that completely shaped in and then shape back. But after I did another one, I realized that it makes it very easy to accidentally make this too wide if you take too much out all at once. So I started going inside that just a little bit and doing all that I could get to with the really coarse short rasps like that guy right there. Get as much as I could in there without dragging it all the way to the edge at first. And then as I get some work done in here, I then come out and I bleed it to the edge and then go back in, take some more, bleed it to the edge, go in, take some more, bleed it to the edge. And I do that until I can match this. That way I know that my runners are straight and that I didn't just wallow out the center and then everything else is going to be narrow, causing a slowdown of the air right here. So at least that's, that's what I gather. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out with a cylinder rasp or the, the straight rasp right here. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to start getting that done. So now to drown out the sound of the compressor and the sound of the tool, I'm going to talk over this and you get to hear the soothing sounds of Alpine Garage. So at this point, we're using that dimple bit to carve out the main part of the lower runner. So at this point, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it even and get down below or at least close to where the line is that we marked with the gasket. Switching over from one bit to the other, this one right here is the straight bit or it's kind of a cylinder bit this was really good for the first part of the runner now as you can see right here i switched over to it's kind of a football shaped bit so it's got a curve on one side and the other and what it enabled me to do is it felt cleaner going into these edges and when i was using the straight bit it actually would kind of cut into it and create a line with this oval bit that didn't happen so i could go and push it and honestly, when you're pushing it through the runner, you can actually feel it gripping and pulling metal off. So this bit was actually my favorite bit for carving out large spaces. Then as you can see, I'm shoving in this grinder as far as I can in there. I'm not getting halfway, I'm getting close to halfway, but I know I'm gonna use the six inch rasp bits to get that middle part and you'll see later on where I'm sticking my finger in there to kind of feel there's a ridge that builds up in the center. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that ridge down later on in the video. But right here, I'm, I'm pretty close to getting this thing shaped in. You can see where the injector port is. Now I'm sticking my finger down in there to kind of show, you know, we've got it smooth. I've got it pretty close to the edge, but not all the way to the edge. Same thing here. You see that boss on the outside where the injection fuel injectors actually connect. There's actually a bump on the inside of that runner. You have to be really careful about this because as you can see, the reason why I pointed it out and I'm going really slow is there's a screw hole that goes through that boss and that screw hole is literally a millimeter from the edge of that uh, runner right there. So you gotta be really careful when you have a boss on the outside of a runner. Likely that screw hole is right on the back side of that. When you're looking at this right here, you can see where there it looks like there's a crack in the runner. Well, that's not a crack. That's actually how a lot of these runners were actually cast. They were not perfect cylinders. They were actually kind of a teardrop shape because that really imperfection there was really deep in the runner. So I actually just smoothed that out. When, at the end, you can still kind of see that vein that runs through there, but not, not as to, to the same extent. Now I switched to the six inch rasp bits and the reason why is because when you get down into these runners, especially from the top, they're really easy to gouge with those really uh, kind of sharp dimple. Using the tapered bit at the top is really kind of what you want to do. So when you're looking at it, you can see how that runner's kind of fading away to my left and that tapered bit being tapered larger from the back, smaller to the front actually helped me keep that curve from getting gouged. That's the hardest part is if you gouge this, you can't go back and fill it, or I guess you can, but you're gonna have to weld. So you gotta be really careful and take small bits out at a time, which is one of the reasons why at the top, I didn't wanna take a whole lot of metal out of that round 
or around those edges because I knew I wouldn't be able to fill them and those dimpled bits or those cheap carbide bits take a lot of metal out all at once especially with aluminum. So here I'm just going back and forth and back and forth and kind of feeling my way around that that runner blocking it up so I can get back to the head side of the intake runner. I used those blocks and pushed against them is what I did. So you can actually build a jig. You see people building jigs to hold these to keep them from moving. But honestly, the way that this went, I felt like if I pushed too hard, it made the intake kind of bend a little bit like it was gonna fall. So that helped me keep myself honest without pushing too hard. And it just went really, really slow. As I got to the second and third and fourth runner, I actually started to be able to feel how big it is and if that socket was going to be able to go through there just by how much I had taken out. You can notice here I was talk I'm talking about the plastic piece that I put right on top of that grinder uh, throttle so that it kept me from getting too going too fast with it because these little crosscut bits get really hot really fast even with the aluminum. So what I would do is I would keep it slow and then if I had to speed up I only sped up for just a little bit and then I went slow again. I stopped for a second sprayed it down with some WD-40 which really cooled it off and then when I went to go cut again it was cutting at two to three times the rate that it was before I did that. So that's a constant. I would say probably about once every two to three minutes I stopped sprayed it with WD-40 to cool it off. So now I'm down near the injector and that injector is a little bit weird because it has a shroud around it from the original casting. So when the injector is sticking in there, there's a little shroud in there. When you're porting this, that shroud ends up going away and it becomes somewhat flush. And when you're looking at that, that would be the top of the runner there. You can actually feel where the air is going to flow over that injector. And you want to make sure that you don't, I guess, leave a hump right in front of it to where the air separates. I wanted the air to go directly over that injector to help atomize that fuel as it comes out. And so I will, I probably spent more time around the injector than I did on any other single part of this build. And the reason why is because you always want to run, you always want to work on the long side of the runner instead of the short side and the reason is because the air flows over the long side faster than it does the short side so at this point you want to work your way on that not take too much out of the floor I have it upside down here so really it looks like I'm working on the floor but I'm really working on the ceiling I'm going to give it a good vacuum and then I'm going to check the back side and the top side to see if I can find that ridge. That ridge gets in there because you can't get the short bits in there all the way. And so you wanna make sure that you actually cut around and get inside of there as much as you can with those long bits. The other reason is because there's that boss on the back side, which you can see just there to the left. That boss leaves a hump and you gotta be really careful. Now this is a three quarter inch socket. I cannot get it down in there. I can on the other side, which is one that I've already finished porting. So that shows you that it'll go straight through. But on the runner that we're porting right now, it gets stuck in there. So what I would do is I would shove that three quarter inch socket down, turn it over, and then look inside the runner and see if it is the long side or the short side on the two sides that it's sticking. In this particular case, the short side looked like it was actually doing pretty good. It was the long side that needed a little bit more radius in it. So that's where I'm poking my finger right now is on the long side. And I take that straight bit and I'm going in there and I'm just massaging that wall. Now this process to put that three quarter inch socket in, I probably did that five or six times per runner just to kind of see whether I needed to take out, you can see I'm taking out the short side runner now. So this is a bottom two runners are ported, top two are not. Took a lot of material out of there. And then when we go to look at the head side of the intake, the bottom is before, the top is after, and you can see how much we actually took out of there. So that was a good port match. You can see, look at the injector holes. Straight through, this is awesome. Now we took the upper intake after we cleaned it up, poured it a little bit, primed it, and then we went ahead and painted it a pearl black color, which actually turned out to be a little bit gray, but it's still good looking in the light.
And here we put a little bit of silicone, actually quite a bit of silicone right there on those two runners between the intakes or between the heads. And the kit that we had that came with the gaskets came with gaskets for those, but I've heard and sometimes they're not all that great for stopping leaks. So I went ahead and just used our TV and then go ahead and set the intake right down on there. You can see that's that intake looks sexy. Holy mackerel. I didn't realize how sexy it looked to look at the video. All right, y'all. It is, uh, again, fast forward, and you can see that the intake is completed. What I did was we ported the lower intake significantly. We didn't port the upper intake very much. What we did was we ported around the where the throttle body is going to go, and back as far as we could get. There's a lot of flaws in this little area, especially right here. And then it funnels down, and I didn't really touch anything there. You can't get into these back runners right here without removing the caps on the sides, which I didn't want to do. But what I did do is on the, on the front side of the runners right here, all the way down, I ported these as far as I could get them. And again, there's a lot of flaws in here as well. So now these are matching the lower intake. The tubes are actually cleaned up quite a bit here. And then I cleaned the intake, which was disgusting. This thing I probably, three quarts of oil in it just stuck to the side so that restricted flow as well so now all of that is gone and I'll show how I did that in a later video and then we painted it a pearl black which I don't know that I'm crazy about pearl black just means that it looks gray you can't even really see the pearl when you get it outside you can see it a little bit but really I should have just painted the whole thing black like I did this and the rest of it but in any case I like the way it turned out this little plate, I'm gonna do something interesting with this. You can actually get some that say 347 stroker on it. I might actually have one that's custom cut for this Bronco. I'm not sure yet, but that will finish it off. And this whole process, the upper and lower intake, took me quite a bit of time. So is it worth doing? I would say if you're gonna port the heads and you're gonna put this intake on it, absolutely. The aluminum is actually easier to port than the cast iron of the heads. There's just a lot more material to take out. So it does take a little bit longer. Once you get the flow and if you commit some time to it, you can get it done pretty fast. But I didn't do that. I kind of drug it on over months. I finally got it done. Now doing this, I can tell you that I feel really good about this engine build. Now if it doesn't turn over and start, I'm going to be heartbroken. But I think it's going to be okay. And looking at similar builds online, we're looking at probably mid to high 300s in horsepower and hopefully over 400 in torque. So we'll see. I'm gonna continue with the engine build videos. We did a new spring kit in it and we talk about rebuilding a few other areas of this and then obviously installing the front dress, headers, things like that. And that's all coming up in another video. Thank you for hanging out with me here at Alpine Garage. We'll see you in the next video.